why is it that some of my and also everyone else's top choices of movies and shows often display at least one character with a mental illness? First off, I want to say that I won't be talking about depression because it deserves a separate video and I apologize in advance if I say something absurd but there will be spoilers ahead for just about every famous movie ever made. With that said, enters Maniac. This show has a look that we are all quite familiar with. It pays tribute to some of the most respected movies in the 80s. The set design and the lighting strongly refer to Alien and A Space Odyssey, sometimes even mimicking some scenes. Oh. No, she's in tremendous pain. She's a computer. A talking computer with feelings is no surprise, but it does get interesting when it shares meaning with the character's mental illness. I'm going to kill them if you go. What? I'm going to cure them all if you go, Owen, and you'll be the only one who wasn't held. But not only aesthetic references to those masterpieces, they also directly hint specific scenes in other movies and even get to play with character references and appearances. The universe they crafted for the show is supposed to be lived in our present but with a late 80s aesthetic and also somewhat its level of technology. The reason they would choose that, for me, is because around the 80s, clinical trials and studies about mental illnesses started to become a product, and enterprises saw the income they could generate by trying to sell a so-called cure for whatever people suffered from. They began labeling diseases in a frenetic pace, trying to put every single person in a frame and sell that idea to them with the hypothetical cure. No wonder the font for the title of the show and the logo of the pharmaceutical company make reference to big time 80s companies. During the series we have a moment where a computer delivers detailed diagnosis of their mental health just by answers they have provided. In this moment we go through a suicidal man's incredibly realistic statement. What do you think is wrong with you? What's wrong isn't that I'm sick. So that I don't matter. Another reference explored happened through the book considered to be the best ever written, Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. I'm gonna read you this time. Because I am healthy Annie now, and healthy people read books, and travel, and exercise, and take care of their minds. Interesting enough, this literature piece discourses about and stick with me now, a man translating a book that tells the story about a man that went mad from reading books about adventurous gentlemen. Very much like the portrayal of mental illnesses inside the so-called dreams they present through the episodes. Just like many other people, our main characters search for relief of their pain, and in that search we get to see what they suffer from. People with schizophrenia like Owen have already been portrayed on the screens before and they show the really complex feeling of not being able to discern truth from hallucination. And similarly portrayed are the dissociative identity disorders. Great masterpieces deal with the subject in a way that leaves the viewer in a state of confusion, especially when blent with the storyline. Some of them manage to show what it means to be in the mentally ill's mind instead of just having us as spectators in a way that we might actually understand the delusions. Bipolar and borderline also have their place on the screens and it presents the complicated life of having extreme ups and downs. Complete euphoria and total lack of will hurt the people that struggle with it, but we have also seen it being portrayed in the funniest way possible. I want to make a quick pause here to exemplify the power of camera angle. When filming from a low angle, we tend to see the character as big and dominant. Whilst from a high angle, it becomes small and fragile. So check how they use this in Jim Carrey's transformation. In some movies, we also get to see a little bit of the reality inside a psychiatric hospital, where nurses and doctors struggle to deliver treatment and sometimes use of cruel techniques even if they intended well. And by the way, the McMurphys are a reference to Jack Nicholson's character. Illnesses like ALS and cerebral palsy have their appearance and we get to see people with autism dealing with the barriers of seeing the world from a different view, all of which tend to have incredible performances by talented actors. And here, I realize that we have a few reasons to cheer for them. We sympathize with the quote-unquote underdog, 
and tend to have compassion for those who we understand that deserve help when asked for. Which leads me to post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, an insanely recurrent theme especially when dealing with war-related PTSD. It tends to showcase hallucinations and quite often violence. Once again, very intense and memorable performances from good actors. On a separate note, even some of our favorite fictional superheroes have backgrounds that deal with PTSD. Yet, I believe there is nothing as recurrent as addiction. It has been used in all sorts of ways, sometimes perhaps romanticized, to the point where we even hope the characters get their fix. Addiction to sex and to drugs are the most common, but every now and then you will see the characters hitting rock bottom and the sad truth of letting your addiction take control of you. The reason we relate to that is because we all have some sort of addiction, even if it is on a minor scale. Last but not least, the generic term of antisocial personality disorder deals, for example, with psychopathy and sociopathy, which on the screens end up being quite violent, but especially obsessive. From all of the illnesses I mentioned, this might be the one that Hollywood had its biggest effect on, making it more commercial, so to say. The way I see it, Maniac managed to really show the sad side of major companies exploring hopelessness of people with a mental illness, and also the lack of compassion these people receive from those who state to love them. And to be fair, what's, what's normal, normal anyway? anyway? People. I know, I know, I know. I've been gone for way too long, especially because I told you guys I'd be coming more often. So, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll, I'll try to keep up. Anyway, really good stuff here. It's my favorite book, by the way. But a tight concept for the show. It was really well made. Unexpectedly good acting, so really nice to see that. But on a side note, if you believe that you need help of any sort, um, you know, seek out for people that might help you. Uh, you might think that uh, there are not too many people out there trying to help, but they are willing to, professional or not, so give yourself a chance to be helped. Uh, anyway, if you thought about any, any movie or show that I left out, please leave a comment below and let's talk about it, because uh, I think the opportunity is really, really good. But also, you know, the usual uh, crush like button and share subscribe whatever do that whole stuff um and follow me on instagram uh i'm still doing that collar thing you some of you might have seen it i really like it it's a lot of fun um so yeah hit me up there and send me a message it's really cool um uh, yeah so anyway my name is conrad and uh, uh i make noises yeah i make noises <laughs>